There's a lot of anxiety that can come along with expecting a brand new baby. So in this video, I brought over two very special guests to talk about it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, those of you who don't know, I'm a father. I have a beautiful 10 year old boy. Why did I call him beautiful? I don't know. But anyways, he's gonna actually be 10 on New Year's Eve. And yeah, like there are so many mental health topics around parenting and I don't do nearly as enough. So I brought over my friend Dan and his lovely wife, Amanda, who have a channel called Parent Pacifier to discuss some of these things. So Dan is one of the coolest guys I've ever met. I actually, um, I've known him for a while, but I met him in person at Vid Summit a couple months ago. But I was like, yo dude, why don't you come over since you have a parenting channel, do some videos about parenting. Cause I know I've done some videos with my son. Like those of you who are around during the Shane Dawson series, I brought him on and people were like, oh, more videos about parenting. So I thought it'd be awesome to introduce you guys to Dan and his wife, Amanda. So anyways, like just for me personally, I can definitely relate to a lot of stuff in this video because there was a ton of anxiety around when my son was about to be born. But for me personally, like I was in a different situation um, and I'm not like super unique. A lot of people deal with this, but I was actually still in my active addiction when we found out um, my son's mom was pregnant and I was unemployed and there was a ton of anxiety around it. But anyways, in this video, there's gonna be a lot of tips and please do me a favor. Please, please, please do me a favor. If you are not a parent, like feel free to share this with somebody you know who is expecting a baby or thinking about having a baby. There are so many great tips in here. But also stick around until the end of this video if you are a parent, because I would love to know your tips and tricks for managing anxiety as an expecting parent, all right? Anyways, I'm gonna shut up and pass it over to Dan and Amanda. Hey, I'm Dan. And I'm Amanda. And we're husband and wife, mom and dad, and we are from the Parent Pacifier YouTube channel, and our website is parentpacifier.com. Chris asked us if we could come on and talk about the struggles and anxieties that mm. new parents have. Uh, yes. We for sure uh, have experienced uh, the anxieties of being new parents. It's actually yeah. why we started our YouTube channel yes. and brand Parent Pacifier, because we wanted to be able to help other new and expecting parents, uh, you know, deal with the headaches and the struggles and just know what works, mm, really. Yeah. Uh, because when we, started, when we became parents, it was like did not feel ready. So in this video, we <laughs> want to be able to give you our tips and share with you our experiences uh, about the anxieties mm. of being expecting parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I first was told um, that I was having a baby, I was at a doctor's office and I was just going for a regular checkup. And so I, it was right before Christmas and we were only two years married, not mm -hmm. planning to have a child right away. We went, kind of wanted to wait for a little while. Yeah. Um, and I had to break the news, um, not the cute little Pinterest <laughs> nope. story way. It was like, I'm on the phone with him, he's at work, and it's eight in the morning, and I'm about to go to my job. And um, yeah, it was it was crazy, but I'm so thankful that Dan took it so well, and <laughs> he, he calmed me down because I was beat red. I um, had to go to work, like I said, and um, I had to calm myself down because I had to function all all day and not say a word to anybody um, so it was really stressful um, I had a lot of anxiety about that and um, and I had a anxiety about what the next step is um, you know I um, always knew I love kids we were excited to have kids one day but I never knew it was gonna be this soon um, so even thinking finance you know we're in a one-bedroom apartment and um, do we have room for a baby do we are we ready are we ready to put a crib in here and um, just our lives were gonna be so different but we were really nervous about uh, are we gonna get questions like where are you gonna live and you know how are you gonna afford that and um, you know well life is not about you anymore and so there's so many different things that came up and we really just went to our friends and and our family for support yeah I think having support and that would be our first tip would be to have support like a mm -hmm. support system of friends family your mm -hmm. spouse if you have one yeah. And for us, 
our church, mm. super helpful. Uh, a support system of just to have conversations mm. about baby stuff, but also to have conversations about non-baby stuff. Yes. There's so much anxiety and so much stress and mm. so much like what is next mm -hmm. during that nine month period. Yeah, more like 10. <laughs> 10 month period <laughs> um, that it's like, I just want to have conversations not about this. And that helps yeah. really bring down the stress levels and the anxiety right. and feel like, oh, well, life's still normal, right? Yeah. Life is still the same, especially like for us, we weren't expecting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's what happened. And yeah. so you just got to roll with the punches, right? So having that support system of, of close friends, close family that you mm -hmm. can actually talk to. Yeah, um, it's huge. But what I think is even more important than that, uh, especially for the moms, mm -hmm. is to have one or two close friends or mm -hmm. someone that you can go to that you can be honest with and yes. that they can ask you questions and be unbiased yeah right because family Absolutely. and friends even spouses it mm -hmm. could be a little biased on how you know basically the advice they give you or the yes. question that they ask because yeah. you might not feel like you can say the full truth or say that you're mm -hmm. really feeling overwhelmed you might need mm -hmm. to say like oh I, I got this like especially yeah. as a new dad like as an expecting dad you know I'm like I need to to take care of this family now, this mm -hmm. new baby and my wife who's pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, this whole new responsibility. Mm -hmm. And although it was like incredibly motivating, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I need to become an entrepreneur. I need to do something because mm -hmm. financially we're not where we want to be right. in our living space. We're not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I can do this. I could be, you know, the mm -hmm. man, but at the same time, I need to be able to go to somebody that I could sit down for me. It was, it was my friend and pastor mm -hmm. who I was able to sit in his office and, and, and be real with. And, and mm -hmm. also family as well. I could be able to do yeah. that, but I think it's very important to have someone outside of the family that you can yeah. go to and be honest with, especially for moms with, with the amount of things that can happen. Oh yeah. I mean, even just the, the pamphlet that I was handed that day of what you can and cannot eat, there was so much anxiety about that. And then the, I had friends who were also pregnant who were giving me advice about no you can eat that and no you can have that and I'm like no I don't want to get gestational diabetes because I'm already um, pre-diabetic so um, you know you there was so much to learn throughout each step of the process of those nine to ten months um, and I really relied on my doctor as well um, and of course our family and our friends um, to just be be real with and and just be myself with them and say you know it, it's okay if I don't know everything and it's okay if if um, maybe my pregnancy is not like everybody else so um, there was there was just a lot in the beginning of just understanding and knowing that you're the individual you're the unique mother and so and be proud of being a new mother to be um and prepare yourself for what the next step is as be confident in yourself you guys are going to be great parents um you know it, it's not easy but um and and the birthing process was also kind of like <laughs> ah, the fear of the unknown um, so, and I was like, I don't want to have a C-section. Well, I ended up having a C-section in the end, but that's okay. Um, and my healing, my recovery was different than some of my friends and my family. And, and that's okay too. It may have been a little longer or I'm still a little sore. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. And, and get the help, get the, have your spouse do those massages. Um, <laughs> have, have your spouse, um, you know, let you go get, a, a massage, um, go get a <laughs> chiropractor appointment. Um, you know, so, so be excited. Um, I know it's scary. Um, but it is such a sweet journey and enjoy the process. I remember somebody telling me that in the very beginning, just enjoy each process, yeah, take really your true. maternity pictures, um, and enjoy, um, being together for just two of you, um, for only a few more months. Um, you know, go on those little dates or, um, go get coffee together and have those conversations with just you two, um, not just about the baby. So, um, but we have our second tip. Right. Well, that was the second tip. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Which was having, you know, someone that you can go to. And, and, and we speak to it as, as a married couple, mm -hmm. but it's so much more, I think, important if you're a single mom mm -hmm. uh, that 
you have support system. You have that one or two people that you can go to every single day and, and ask yeah. those things and take advantage of people who can give you time yeah. to go and do the things that you need to do. And our third tip, mm -hmm. similar to, to what we've been saying, is when people ask, mm -hmm. like, how can I help you? Is there anything that I can do? Because everyone asks that, right? Oh, yeah. Take them off guard and say, yes. <laughs> like, um, for us, one of the, the biggest helps was, is our church. But if you don't have a church, you know, not everyone has that. And, and, and for us, actually, at our church, they set up a meal plan. So mm -hmm. anybody who's pregnant or has surgery or anything, they'll do two weeks of bringing meals to yes. you. Every single day, people sign up to bring you meals. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that kind of opportunity, mm -hmm. actually, when people ask you, like, how can I help you? You could say, you know, it'll be great. <laughs> Because here, this will really help relieve the anxiety of what's going to come in those first two weeks. Definitely. It's saying, hey, can, do you, would you mind maybe putting together a few people that can set up some meals, like, for, just so I know that I have dinner every night? Because mm -hmm. I don't know what life's going to be like. I'm going to be exhausted and wiped. Mm -hmm. can, can you, would you be willing to do that? Um, and I know it's mm -hmm. awkward, right? It's mm -hmm. awkward to probably say mm -hmm. that. But when people ask, it's like, actually do it. Yeah. Because it'll help save you that one more anxiety, that one more worry about, well, what am I going to do for dinner those days? Because yes. I, who knows, right? Like, yeah. you had the C-section and we were mm. in the hospital for almost five days yeah. and yeah. never left. Mm -hmm. And when we got home, we were like, well, okay, we, we just knew. shopping. Yeah, but, but we knew, <laughs> one, we had family who was bringing us food. Yeah. And two... We knew we had friends in our church who were bringing us food, and they brought us food for a while. They really and did. It, w it yeah. really helped just not having to worry about it. Definitely. Because otherwise, there's a lot to worry about there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so actually take advantage of when people ask, like, hey, how can I help you? Or have them go and do something for you. Like yeah. I said, especially expecting parents, moms, mm -hmm. in that third trimester, yes. if, if or anytime, even if you're getting like a lot of morning sickness, right? Yeah, like it, yeah. you could, you could ask people like, Hey, I need someone to go and <laughs> go food shopping for me. Yeah, go food like shopping. here's my list and here's the money. Like here's an envelope or yeah. Venmo or something, you know, yeah. the money over and just say, can you just take care of these few things for me? Even I'm thinking about the laundry, right? Cause when you're getting so big and wide, it's hard to bend. It's hard to lift things. Yeah. So I suggest have somebody who you're comfortable with do your laundry for you in the last few weeks of your trimester. You can do a rotation. You can have more than one person that you're comfortable with to do that or help you clean the house even. And I know as a, as a, you know, a future mom, I was, I was very prideful. I'm like, I have to do everything. And I mm -hmm. had to lower my pride and let people help me. And they had so much joy doing it because they love you. Now, tip number four is to take advantage of the free classes that are out there. A lot of mm -hmm. baby stores, um, Babies or Us had a bunch of them near yeah. us until they closed. Um, but Bye Bye Baby and other ones, and also some hospitals will give mm -hmm. free classes, free advice sessions or Q&As, yeah. um, opportunities to talk with pediatricians and mm -hmm. different things. Take advantage of yeah. those free opportunities. And, so, and maybe some of them are paid. Right. It's still worth, I think, going because if you don't know nothing, like we knew nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I there was this. A little. Was okay, a you knew a little. You were a babysitter. Tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew absolutely nothing. And well, like right after we found out you were pregnant, we were like, let's walk into Target and go into the baby section. <sighs> and we literally looked at the baby section and said, uh, Where do you begin? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do we, what do we put on a registry? Yeah. Like the wedding registry was easy. Oh yeah. The baby registry, like what? Oh, so, so intimidating. We took advantage of things like doing a baby registry walk through with yes. Bye Bye Baby. Right. Yeah. We, we really like that because we had someone that can walk us through that was not family, that was not friends saying, this is what I like. This is what it was someone that just from the store who was knowledgeable on all the different products and yes. could walk us through you know, what each thing was, what we could find in those sections. And it was right. like a good hour and a half. Oh, you no. were wiped, it was like two exhausted. hours. <laughs> it felt so uh, long. My feet were hurting. <laughs> but essentially it was like a free class. And it was mm -hmm. like where you get to learn like, all right, what's the difference between a glass bottle and a yes. plastic bottle? What's your preference there? The car seats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the differences of the car seats. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all of the different products to like, you know, making baby formula to... Yes. 
uh, di- all the different baby bathtubs and yeah. do you want to go with the expensive one or the cheap one and what's <laughs> the difference like what are those things take advantage of the free court the free classes yeah. you know s- baby CPR classes mm-hmm. things that you could take advantage of at that point mm-hmm. and and schedule those things in because it's a great a great thing to do and i think it does help maybe some it will increase anxiety because <laughs> it's more <laughs> things you're thinking about but i think o- overall it will help you kind of feel more confident yeah i think that's the important part of like and all right i feel you confident to ask those questions and tip number five is take a birthing class yes yeah, we learned so much in just three sessions. They were two hours each. Um, it was three consecutive Tuesdays, and uh, we had a wonderful instructor who was sweet, who was very detailed on on how much information that she can give you in just those short few nice. sessions um and then we were in a class of i think there was about six to eight couples and uh, we were all on the verge to pop and actually one person um gave birth before the last session so that was pretty cool mm-hmm. and then we got to talk about her birth because our birthing instructor happened to be there at the hospital at the time and help her with the birth so that was so cool um but i actually made a really good friend through that class i have to admit the last two times out of three, I was emotional. I was leaving there in tears or literally in tears in the middle of the session. I felt that overwhelmness because I was so scared. I was so scared of labor and mm-hmm. didn't know what to expect. Um, I knew I had a good um, partner in crime and a good coach, they call them. Um, but me personally, I was terrified. So um, I, I will be real about that. I cried half, more than half of the sessions. But <laughs> what a blessing yeah. because I saw other girls feeling the same way and they would talk after class and they would say the same thing, you know, that we're all overwhelmed. We're all nervous. When is it going to happen? Is it going to happen before the 40 weeks? Is it going to be any minute now? And so do you have your hospital bag ready? Like I waited to the last minute to put that in the the car. And a lot of people felt like you should be doing it earlier. So, you know, you just never know. But um, it was a good experience. And oh, but one thing I really loved is that every time I had my internals, sorry to get personal, but every time I had my internals, I understood what the doctors meant because my birthing instructor told me what yeah. each what each station was and the effacement and all these words that you're probably like what but um but I I was able to understand what that meant and that when I was really really getting ready and when I was really lowering and it was so that was kind of cool that lowered my anxiety because yeah. doctors speak to you and you're like what I need to I need to yeah. Google that what you just said. So having that birthing instru- instructor tell you what things really mean in detail just really helps. So it was really cool. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of people, you know, say like, oh, well, you forget like all of it when you walk in. And sure, mm-hmm. that could be true, especially if you walk in and it's like the movie scene where you're rushing in and like the baby's like it's never it's not most of the time it's not like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it is for you, but uh, it, for most people, it's not like this crazy like rushed in thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna take a while. Mm-hmm. So having that class for me helped me understand a lot of things that I never had a clue about. I'm like, what? What about any of this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it helped me have confidence, one, to know what to expect mm-hmm. without just going on YouTube and watching a bunch of, like, I would never want to go in and watch birthing videos and all that stuff. But to be able to have a class <laughs> with a nurse who ended up being one of our nurses yeah. during the, de- the uh, delivery. Tip number six is just be active. Mm. Like, go out for walks be in the sun, you know, it, it could be very, I think, especially for moms, you get in that, that third trimester, you know, you're on your maternity leave already, if you are, and now yeah. it's just kind of, you're on the couch mm-hmm. and everyone's got different pregnancies. So some it could be really miserable. Mm-hmm. Others are completely okay. But I think it's important to kind of get out and even for dads, get out and go for a walk, mm-hmm. be in the sun. It'll help clear your head. Yeah. You could think you could just not be stuck in that environment that you're going to be stuck in for three months <laughs> when your baby is never sleeping and yeah. you're never sleeping. Yes. <laughs> um, so preparing for that, <laughs> which I hope that doesn't cause more anxiety, um, just the reality. Mm-hmm. But you could kind of get that time out. Enjoy the time out. Enjoy the free time while you have it. Yes. Um, it'll help give you some clear clarity of mind and 
I know for me it lowered anxiety. Yeah, definitely. I was sticking to my Zumba class every week and I had women look at me with such a shocked face saying, why are you still here? Why are you doing it? And I'm, and I said, well, I got to stay active. You know, I, I have to, I can't, I, like I said, I was pre-diabetic. So I had to watch how much I ate and I had to exercise still throughout my pregnancy. Um, and so I, with the women trying to convince me to stay home and don't come back. I didn't take their advice. I, I went with what my doctor said and she said, you can do it all the way to the end. Tip number seven, remember to enjoy the small things. Mm. Like go out to eat, mm. get a foot massage right? <laughs> or go out and go to the spa or whatever, whatever it is you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me as a dad, I enjoy wrestling, watching wrestling mm. like WWE. Um, so having that outlet to enjoy, even though it's kind of stressful, Remember to enjoy those small things and Mm -hmm. that will be helpful. And again, it's always, it's because it's just a season. Remember it's a season. It feels like forever. And especially every kind of new season with the kids as as we're learning, you know, at a year and three months now of having our son, Mm -hmm. every few months is a new season Mm -hmm. and new, new struggles and new things and then new awesome things that aren't a struggle. Mm -hmm. So remember, it's just a season and give yourself permission to enjoy some things because otherwise it's just all about the pregnancy and all about that. And you'll be miserable Mm. and and you're going to let your anxiety, you're going to let your, you know, um, frustrations and irritability Mm -hmm. take over. Yeah. And then you're just, you don't get to enjoy it. And you said it earlier, you know, enjoy the process. I know for me right now, I've been, um, scheduling with my closest friends, Um, from church that we're all moms and some are, you know, um, veterans or some are new moms. Um, But we come together, we try to do once a month. And I actually have like through two people in that group who are expecting moms. One mom is going to have her fifth child. The other one's going to have her first child. And we wanted to take time before they went on to the next step um, with having the baby and we got together and we wanted to embrace and and just enjoy the time before that and but we're going to also do it consistently after we're going to we're going to invite them to come out because we want to tell them it is healthy to come out and and to have some mom talk but not just about the baby but have some of you talk and 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 talk about your self-care that's very important Um, and and to also give the opportunity to ask those hard questions questions about you know are you having thoughts of depression and anxiety um are they are they are you stuck in those thoughts um and and we want to be there to help Mm -hmm. so um and be that support system for you so um i'm excited because from my experience i enjoyed my girl night outs um and i really needed that and um, if I was invited, then I felt obligated to go. And then when I went, I felt so good that I went and I felt refreshed. And it's okay to do that. I hope this was helpful for you. And thank you to Chris for having us on. And we look yes. forward to seeing you in the next video. All right. Thank you so, so, so much, Dan and Amanda, for coming over and talking about this. Like, there were so many great tips in there and so many things like I was when I was watching their video like I was looking back and thinking you know uh pretty much 10 years ago when we were expecting Dylan and all these things and all these worries and and you know like they said too like get a support group get a support group whether it's friends family or like you know we have the rewired soul Facebook group or discord server or there's tons of parenting groups on Facebook you know find other people who are going through this or like Dan and Amanda said you know they have their church but also make sure that you're doing things for yourself as well like self-care is huge like something that i've learned as a parent is that if i don't keep this thing on straight i am not going to be the best parent i can be for my son you know what i mean but anyways like i said like make sure to leave tips and tricks for all of you parents down there like what what helped you like manage your anxiety and the stresses and the worries when you were expecting a child all right let's have a conversation down below but anyways that's all i got for this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and If you would like to subscribe to Dan and Amanda over at Parent Pacifier, and they will be doing even more guest videos, click or tap right there, and there are also some other links uh, and resources down below, all right? Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.